Welcome back to the Engineerable channel. Now today I have some new and interesting hop-ups to show you. I bought all these hop-ups and parts with my own money. This is not a sponsored post. Even if it was, I'd be totally honest about everything. Comparing it to the hop-up that we used previously, this one on the splatter ball that I installed in another video. Go check out that video if you want to see how to install this hop-up on the splatter ball. So this hop-up was a riser v2 hop up it's branded here as u-band but it's just a rebranded hop up it has two tongues it's got one tongue on top and one tongue on the bottom the top one is ribbed and the bottom one is not so the idea is that the top one gives it the back spin and the bottom one kind of adjusts the amount of pressure and kind of resets the level because what happens is the top one gives it a top spin and it also kind of pushes the ball down and so the ball will kind of go down a little bit and then rise up. But um, if you have the bottom tongue, it can help even that out. However, this hop up uses these teeny tiny little set screws in here. And realistically, you're not gonna have the wrench out on the field to adjust these set screws. And you need to be able to adjust these set screws once in a while, especially if you change your ammo, let's say from your regular ammo to glow in the dark ammo at night you'll need to make some minor settings. So I have not been able to even find that Allen wrench that came with it. So when I've been out on the field, I want to make some adjustments. I can't because I don't have that Allen wrench on me. It's just, it's too small to carry around. I could probably 3D print some tool to have available, but you know, it's kind of a pain. These are called the Aztec Range Warrior hop-ups. Now these hop-ups by Aztec Innovations they solve the problem by having a toolless adjustment. So once this hop-up is attached to your barrel on this end, then you can just use your hand to make adjustments like this. And as the hop-up barrel moves in and out, it adjusts the position of this tongue. Now I noticed just now that this tongue looks like it's been under molded. Let's compare it to the other one. This is a correctly molded tongue here, and this is a tongue that was undershot. So I'm gonna request a refund or exchange on this so that I can get one with a correctly molded tongue because that's probably gonna affect the performance right there. You can see that the plastic didn't get all the way up in the end of the mold like it did here. This ported one is a little bit finicky to thread on because the tip wants to get stuck in the port, so you kinda of have to get it going first and you won't be threading it that far off most of the time because that's too far. The max adjustment is right here and that doesn't interfere with the ports. So you've got about five, six millimeters of space here of adjustment. And so the way it works is that it's got this chamfer here that mates with the chamfer on the tongue. So here in this position, it's adjusted to the max hop-up effect, which means the tongue is as far down as it will go, which is probably a little bit too far than you would actually use. And now as I rotate this, it's reducing the hop-up effect until it bottoms out. And then this is the minimum hop-up effect where the tongue is all the way up against the outer surface here. These hop-ups come in two different versions. You have a non-ported version and a ported version. So I got one of each to try them out because the ported version may be better to release air out the sides and not affect the spin of the gel balls that comes out because with the non-ported version, you're effectively slightly increasing the barrel length. Although it's not a tight fit in there, there's still air that can blow past and it can affect the spin of the ball. But if the ball is rubbing along the top of the tongue and the air is blowing out underneath, then maybe that gives a better top spin effect. And the ported version is gonna allow the air to flow out, so it's not going to affect the spin of the ball as much. So I'm gonna compare both of these and see which one is better. Is the ported version better or the non-ported version better? This black one was the first one that I opened up and I noticed that the threads were quite loose and loose enough that the, that the whole thing would move. So what I did is I wrapped 10 layers of Teflon tape around the threads. And I started off with like five layers, tested it, then eight layers, tested that, and until I got to 10 layers where I felt like it was tight enough. So you could start out with just a few layers and then try that and get enough layers that 
it feels nice and tight and is not loose anymore. For me, 10 layers was the sweet spot. However, these other ones, they feel a little bit tighter, but they're still too loose. Like this is really loose. Like you would just bump this and it would spin very easily versus this is not gonna spin unless you intentionally rotate it to adjust it. Also, if it's too loose on the threads and it can wiggle like up and down and, or left and right, it's gonna affect the flight of the gel ball when it's coming out. So it's, you wanna put some Teflon tape on there to increase the thread size and improve the tightness of the outer adjuster on the threads. Another advantage of these hop-ups is their tightening method onto the barrel. So it uses these fingers here to grab onto the barrel such that when you tighten it with this nut, it squeezes the fingers onto the barrel and it'll improve the fit with the barrel for different sizes. They say nine to like 9.5 millimeters. So your standard gel blaster barrels of good quality gel blasters are usually like about 9.5 millimeters. So this one's like 9.48 millimeters. However, if you remember when I did the mod on this spider ball, that barrel measured about nine millimeters and I had to use a piece of an aluminum can as a shim to increase the diameter such that it would be a tight fit on there and it wouldn't be wobbly. This Surge XL blaster, it also has a kind of non-standard diameter aluminum barrel. So the barrel on this one is only about 9.08 millimeters. So it's also a non-standard barrel dimension. So that means that this should fit right on the end of this barrel and it does slide right over that barrel, no problem. Although we need to see how tight it is once we get it on there because if it's still wobbling around, I might still add a shim to it. For a nice fit on the barrel, you're gonna need about 18 to 19 millimeters of barrel length available. With most of these blasters that we have here, that means cutting off some of the muzzle or going into the body to be able to reach that much barrel. So to put it on the barrel, you're gonna put the nut on the barrel first, and then we're gonna slide the fingers over the barrel. Now it's a little tricky. You're gonna to have to start on one side and stretch the fingers out to get that barrel in there. And then you can push the barrel all the way in and thread this on counterclockwise so all the threads are opposite on here and try to tighten that up as much as you can it might not hurt to even put like a drop of glue in there maybe something that's removable but it'll just keep it in place keep it from spinning because i noticed that when i made the threads tighter using the teflon tape that it has a little bit of a tendency to rotate this thing on the barrel if this is not really tight on there if you're careful you can also use a flathead screwdriver in the slot here or here, but it's gonna damage the Teflon tape to help you tighten that. You don't wanna wreck the threads over here though. So now screw the outer barrel extension on. And now it's tight enough that it's not spinning on the barrel. The barrel's slipping my hands past the stop point here even. So when I'm adjusting it normally, it's perfectly fine. It's not spinning on there. You can make the adjustments just fine just spinning in my hand a little bit. This is the barrel of an unlocks blaster, this blaster right here. This barrel also only measures about nine millimeters. So it's also below the standard 9.5 millimeters. The unlocks barrel slides really easily into the hop up and it's quite shaky before tightening it. I've tightened it as much as I can and I don't feel like it's a good fit. It's still shaky and moving around it's not gonna work out. It still needs a shim, unfortunately. But a strip from an aluminum Coke can should solve that problem. So I can't say that I'm a great fan of this tightening solution that they've used here. It seems to work well on the 9.5 millimeter, but things that are smaller like the nine millimeter, it's too loose. Now, fortunately, soda cans are soft and you can cut them just with regular scissors. So let's cut a strip out of the soda can. Now the wall thickness of the soda can is about 0.11 millimeters. So wrapping this around the barrel two times will increase the diameter to close to 9.5 millimeters.
Okay, so now this is wrapped around two times. Let's see if we can get this to fit in here. Got it. Perfect. I'm actually just going to push the can in there and then put the barrel inside the barrel inside the can. There we go. That is a perfectly snug fit now. And so this was done with the Unlocks barrel, but it's going to be the same for the Splatterball barrel or the Gel Blaster Surge XL barrel or the Starfire XL barrel. But as you saw, it wasn't too difficult to just cut a can into a strip that wraps around twice the barrel to increase the diameter such that it's about 9.5 millimeters and makes it fit tighter. So now it's super secure on here. It's not going anywhere. It's still hard to get it tight enough so it doesn't spin. So I'm going to see if I can put a little bit of adhesive in there to prevent it from spinning like that. Having a set screw on the tightening end would be nice to keep it from rotating as you're making adjustments. I will be making some more videos demonstrating how to install the Aztec Range Warrior hop-ups on the Gel Blaster Surge, the Unlocks, the Splatterball SRB400, and also the SRB1200, the Hydro Strike Pulsar Pro, and any other rifle sized blasters that I can get my hands on. So make sure you stay tuned and watch those other videos where I actually install these on the specific blasters and test to see how they improve the performance.